What's up guys? Welcome back to yet another simplified astrophysics video. In today's video, I'm going to be talking about the Schwarzschild radius of a black hole. I'm going to start by explaining the physical concept, and I'm then going to move into a discussion of the really cool history behind Carl Schwarzschild. Let's get started. All right, so a Schwarzschild radius is the radius to the event horizon of a black hole. Let's talk about what that means. You may know black holes as a dead star that sucks up and spaghettifies anything that comes near it. Black holes act that way because they are extremely dense. They have an enormous amount of mass stuck in a tiny small amount of space. An analogy you can use to understand the composition of a black hole is that it's like stuffing an entire skyscraper into something really small, like the period at the end of a sentence. Now the event horizon of a black hole is the sort of tipping point of a black hole from which there is no escape. The reason you can't escape beyond the event horizon is that the gravitational effects are just way too strong there. It's way too close to the center of the black hole. Even light, that crazy fast wave particle, goes crazy and gets like trapped beyond the event horizon. Now the Schwarzschild radius is simply the distance from the center of the black hole to the event horizon. We represent the Schwarzschild radius with the equation r equals 2gm over c squared, in which g is Newton's gravitational constant, m is the mass of the object, in most cases the black hole, and c is the speed of light. We can tell a few things from this equation. Firstly, anything in theory can have a Schwarzschild radius, as long as it has mass. Mass is the only characteristic property in this equation. Everything else is just a bunch of constants. And secondly, for an object to have a measurable Schwarzschild radius, it needs to be super massive, and I mean incredibly, really massive. Just look at the equation. The mass is divided by the speed of light squared, which we know is an incredibly huge number. That's like 300 million meters per second, and the whole thing squared. Ordinary things aren't gonna have measurable Schwarzschild radii and event horizons. A car weighing about one and a half tons would have a Schwarzschild radius of pretty much about zero meters. A plane weighing 430 tons would have a Schwarzschild radius of about zero meters. And a Dwayne Johnson, the rock, weighing 260 pounds would have a Schwarzschild radius of about zero meters. The only thing with enough mass to have a Schwarzschild radius that's measurable must be something f so far off and so massive. A star, perhaps. And not just any stars. The stars that form black holes are the most massive ones out there. They're like the troublemakers. They must weigh at least three times the mass of our sun, or in kilograms, a three with 30 zeros behind it or in pounds, a one with 31 zeros on its trail. So recapping, the Schwarzschild radius is the distance to the event horizon tipping point of a black hole from which nothing, not even light, can escape. And for an object to have a measurable Schwarzschild radius, it must be absolutely huge. Now if all that science didn't blow your mind, I promise that the history in which the Schwarzschild radius was discovered will. The Schwarzschild radius was discovered by its namesake Carl Schwarzschild, who was a German Jewish physicist from the early 1900s. Schwarzschild provided a solution to general relativity that theorized the radius to the event horizon tipping point of a black hole. Now here's the interesting part. He did that while stuck in a war, and not just any war, World War I. Schwarzschild served in the German army from the war's outbreak in 1914. He was stationed on the Eastern Front near Russia and wrote three research papers from then until his 1916 death. What's more, from 1915 onwards, Schwarzschild contracted a rare skin disease that's very painful called pemphigus. He still wrote those three research papers while suffering from that disease. While he had this rare, deadly, painful skin disease and was stuck on the frozen Russian eastern front of the world's most deadliest war, I mean at the time at least, 
he decided to do some astrophysics. Schwarzschild studied general relativity while on the front. He actually ended up solving some of Einstein's general relativity field equations, bringing about the first exact solutions to general relativity. One of his solutions theorized black holes. Of course, back then, they were just these mysterious warps in space-time in which the laws of classical physics seemed to fall apart in an area so massive and dense. So that's how we know about black holes. Because some guy stuck with a rare, painful skin disease on the eastern front of the world's most deadliest war decided to do some math. And we know black holes by their short chilled radar. Well, that's all I got for this video today. I'll be back with another one soon, so don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe before then. Peace out. <laughs>